Steve William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We are here at the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Board meeting of September 24th, 2013. The agency is known as DART to Dallas, Texas residents. They are also known as poor sportsmanship hating children by denying some children medical care to some employees because of their parents' sexual preference. Wait a minute, did I actually say that in this era of equal rights? My God! Executive Vice President Carol Wise presented information on the goals to create a five-star customer service environment for the entire organization. And the plans include an impressive series of steps to enhance DART service image. And present riders are already seeing some friendlier operators. Now, our ridership numbers are certainly going to increase with that. More service area citizens will see the ways DART is striving to make the trip worth it. And we all know the service miles covered have already made DART an envied example. Bringing five-star customer service <coughs> excuse me, ways to put the agency ahead of other transit agencies and authorities throughout the nation and creating a new, more customer-centered environment will take time and effort. Ms. Wise asked Vice President Tim Newby to expand on the present training, future retraining, of operators and customer service personnel. Chief James Spiller detailed ways that DART officers are working for quick response to problems. Many patrons throughout the nation are challenged by the large numbers of cell phone thefts. Phone security is certainly an important element as DART's initiatives for the new GoPass app to help our growing ridership. Now officers are using more efficient data sharing to counter public misconceptions about safety and security. Too often reports cite events but not responses 
and solutions. Chief Spiller was able to point out some very good ways in which his staff responds to problems throughout the system. Vice President Doug Douglas explained <coughs> important procedures for matching vehicle assignment features for trip times and pattern, pat <coughs> patterns for many of our special needs riders. Five star customer service will require some really coordinated effort throughout the agency. And Ms. Wise assured that by having input from attending leaders of the frontline staff there to prove it. Your financial planning and support decisions should keep dark shining for the days ahead. Please don't hesitate to call on your CAC representative to help. And please feel welcome to attend any of our meetings on the third Thursday of each month. Thank you for your good effort.
we have um, 18 University of Texas UT Southwestern Medical Center Science Specific Travel Service Agreement, 19 is a senior Plano Senior Citizen Transportation Funding Agreement, 20 is a contract for the purchase and installation of passenger shelters, 21 is the advanced funding agreement with the Texas Department of Transportation for regional total of revenue for an ITS project. 22 ILA with North Central Texas Council Governors for outside the service area HOV operations and 23 local assistance program area. Program on location request for the city of California. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, items 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 all came through the planning committee and were approved unanimously. The items uh, were also approved unanimously twice in the committee as a whole, and our committee approved it tonight. Okay. So, we will vote to the second page. We will vote 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 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 The June item four will be also postponed to the next meeting of the We should be on what day it's not. Do we? Are we ready? October 8th. This time we have. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, if I might, um, I need to be excused for a commitment for one thing. I will be leaving the meeting at this time. Okay, thank you. And I also have to be to check that report for. Yes. Okay, thank you. This time we're going to go into our public hearing and the first uh, public comments, I'm sure you should say. And the first speaker is Samuel A. Lucille Junior. Samuel? Yes. My name is Samuel A. Lucio Jr. Uh, King Gideon here to make a uh, complaint. <laughs> September the 6th, 7, 4, 9 a.m., 164 to downtown. Told three people to get off the bus and drove off. It was 7, 4, 9 to downtown in the morning. September the 15th, bus driver said, I tried to pick a fight with him, I can't even walk. And uh, so he left me, it was at 5, 48 p.m., 110 to downtown. And then the 110 to downtown, September the 27th, the 22nd, 7, 48 didn't pass. PM. And you can't get in here to make a complaint man because the people will not help you. They refuse to help you and the phone hangs up. But I said I wanted to pick a fight with my kid even walk. And they, they people just don't care here, man. They don't. That's all I got to say. And they're not accepting any complaints. They don't want to accept any complaints. They don't. That's all I got to say. Um, They're refusing to, to, to get complaints. Because I came up here, man, and they won't. Next week, we'll be listening. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you. I think I talked to you before. I don't think you're going to hear nothing about it either. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. In 2009 and 2011, the TRA had seven of its nine fleet locomotives overhauled. Four went to one vendor and the remaining three went to another. A matter of concern is the latter three locomotives that were presented as an IFB contract and cost an additional $1.3 million and not unnecessary over expenditure. This became one third of the cost of the total project. The most qualified bidder, $2.5 million, was not awarded the contract because they were not the lowest bidder. Due to the nature of the contract, the lowest bidder, $2.3 million, was allowed to run the total project cost up to $3.6 million, resulting in that $1.3 million overrun. The additional cost was for items already in the specification, not additional items added to the original scope. This issue could have been avoided had the contract been awarded as an RFP. 
as was done with the overhaul of the previous four locomotives. Point two, the three locomotives previously mentioned were not completed and the new electrical electronic system specified in the TRE technical specification was not installed, leading to several mechanical failures culminating in late trains. And it was left, and if left, as, it, as is, will inevitably lead to future locomotive failures if not addressed. To tackle the completion, DART has commissioned the OEM who will install the system that should have been installed in the original overhaul. The price for the new overhaul is approximated at $550,000. This request will be brought before the board for its approval shortly and will bring the entire overhaul cost to approximately $4.1 million, a 56% increase over the original budget. Two cars have set, and point three, two cars have sat idle in the TRE yard not producing any revenue for a year and a half due to a dispute with a vendor over $400 worth of parts. These cars were scheduled to go into overhaul in the spring of 2012. The $400 worth of parts in question are scheduled to be replaced in the overhaul and are not necessary to ship the cars. This failure to send the cars as scheduled has delayed the project a year and a half. If there is an upturn in ridership, the TRE will not have enough equipment on hand to cover the ridership, resulting in having to use additional outdated RDCs to transport passengers. Rather, a decision is being contemplated to send the entire project out for rebid. This contract was originally for nine cars to be overhauled, with three more as options for a total of 12. The present vendor is receiving approximately 700,000 700, per car. The original three competitors bid approximately 1.2 million, the next at 1.1 million, he was disqualified, and the present day vendor is the lowest at 700,000 per vehicle. A rebid will be much more expensive and will escalate the project cost as much as 55, 60%. Point number four is in 2011, a 20-year capital improvement plan of the TRE assets was undertaken by an external firm for approximately $500,000. In 2009, the same CIP was performed internally. The cost for the CIP was the salaries of DART and TRE personnel involved, which was considerably less than the $500,000. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Um, my complaint is good a lot of the kids are affected on a daily basis. A lot of the kids are able because their system is not prepared. They were prepared to be in A to B with shuttle buses. And I was very upset. Last week, I was late to work because the bus operator was told by a supervisor to go back to the mission. The amount of money that we have we should expect better customer service from the bus drivers and that they should break down less, less often. And to me, it just seems like now every emergency that we always have, everybody's always ill prepared and always rushing to get things done and we do not provide shuttle buses. There's always an apology, but there's never a follow up. No one ever calls me back. No one ever gives me a reference number. They don't know what's going on. And Every weekend, especially on the routes 46, the 48, the 583, and usually other buses, but those three bus routes are very prominent. The buses are late, but they never show up, especially on the weekends. And it always happens when the customer service center is closed. Like, it's just very frustrating that I'm just investing all my money into making sure that y'all, that the bus route operators get from point A to point B. Bus operators are already at work, and we don't, it seems like we're getting the short end of the stick. So, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Next speaker is Rafael McDonald. Rafael McDonald. I'll wait to speak until the next meeting. I'll wait until the next meeting. You wait to speak until the next meeting. Neil Gaper. 
My name is Esther, and I'm a mother of four military children. I raise my children because one child is bipolar, and I raise them that it's okay to take the transit. And so I, I ride that transit as well. And I moved to Garland a year ago, and now I take the 463. The 463 has been late. I've been late to my job, and I I do appreciate it because the 463 on Walnut and Garden Road takes me straight to Addison because I work in Addison, and I take the 534 to my destination, which which is 16200 Addison Road, which is which is about a mile and a half. But the 463 is eight times out of ten always late because it is 56 minutes of the hour i'm a diabetic and i am in control and i exercise and i carry a heavy gym bag every morning i walk from my home to the exercise with this bag because i am determined to stay with longevity for my grandkids and my great grandchildren so i walk to my planet fitness and then I take the 463. And it's 56 minutes and it's late. So I miss the hour on the hour of the 534. So I walk to my job with this heavy bag. A little walking isn't going to hurt me, but a lot of sun and a lot of rain will kill me. So, so, so I'm here just to express the voice. The 463. I'm not here to change your schedule, but I, but I am here to express that maybe you should just do it every 40 minutes, every half hour. I'm late to my job. I'm already going to get fired over it. One supervisor at your customer care had mentioned, well, why don't you take the hour earlier? And I said, well, that, well, I shouldn't even have to do that. Okay. But I did. I spoke to my supervisor and he said, okay. And I'm still late. I'm still late. One night, I get, I work nights. I work from 12.30 to 9 p.m. He, he even gave me that I can leave at 8.40 because I need to catch that 5.34 at my stop at, at 8.51. Twice a bus driver left me. Maybe that stop doesn't have a lot of ridership, but he left me. I had to walk. I was devastated. I had to walk to the Addison station and catch, I guess, my bus. But I caught a ride from this gentleman. I didn't want to, I'm wiser than that, but I was tired. I was just so tired, I wanted to faint, so I took that ride. He touched my leg, because I work for a law firm and I have to dress sophisticated. So that day, I had a dress on with heels. He touched my leg. I was terrified. All I could do was pray. He dropped me off. Okay, but it, it couldn't happen that way. It could have happened differently. I'm not here to change your schedule. I'm just here to say that I understand that maybe there's that moral ridership on that 463 because there is. Because at every stop, there's there's a writer and there's two wheelchair persons okay so i'm not here to change your schedule but maybe that 463 needs to come every half hour i'm fixing to lose my job i'm raising i'm raising a great grandchild because my my granddaughter joined the navy i can't lose my job i need to raise that four-year-old so i'm just here to express that I appreciate. I appreciate your transit. I really do. 
that I can't be taking those rides when I can't walk at 9 o'clock at night. I can't walk in that heat with this heavy gym bag. So I appreciate you and I appreciate DART. Thank you. That's true. That's true. Would you talk with Bob Smith? Bob, he's right over here. Thank you. Excuse me, board of directors. A lot of my um, co-activists have waived their right to speak. And I know this is going to probably get me thrown out, so you can come up here and get me if you want to. But the coward is shown tonight. The imagery shown on this board tonight is disgusting. You are appointed by people. And don't think that we don't know who appoints you or that we won't protest those people to make sure that this board is more diverse and that all families are matter. Now, separation of church and state should go as far as this board is concerned. And the fact that you can walk up out of here to, to, so that you won't have a quorum, so that you won't have to vote because you feel like you've lost a battle and you don't want to watch it go down, it's disgusting and immature and childish. And may all of you that had a party of that being to be shame of yourself because LGBT families and children matter. And I've things at this thing and watched you work us about the Bible and Leviticus and all this other crap. We were talking about health care for children. What's hiding behind that door? Shame on you. Did you state your name for the record, please? My name is Steve Kirvin, and I'm a good equal. Okay, thank you. Next speaker is Karen Yarbrough. Karen Yarbrough. Speaking of, uh, of the board members tonight, I've been four or five times in the past six months and Michael Cheney's not been here. I'm wondering, is Garland representing this board at all? Why is he absent every time I'm here? I'm back the fourth time with the same issue because Dart doesn't seem competent to get the problem solved the first time, or the second, or the third, or the fourth. I'm back again. Same issue. Crime, running at the rail stations, and uh, Pollution of the air at the rail station where we can't get to the train platform without breathing pollution that jeopardizes our health and safety. It causes emphysema, lung problems, breathing, respiratory problems, allergies, asthmas, cancers, all kinds of stuff. We need to get a control of this. I also want to call to the board attention that there's complete and total lack of control by people all over the West End all day Saturday and all day Sunday with no police down there at all. Hell's breaking loose. People are drunk out there. They're disorderly. They're in violation of every code of conduct DARP has ever published, which doesn't get divorced at all. And I have to call for a police officer and wait over a half hour or 45 minutes for one to show up to basically walk me from the train platform when I get off the train to the building where I can use the bathroom so I can get on another train to go home. And that is ridiculous. No police at all, all day Saturday, all day Sunday in the West I can go to there any time, day or night, any hour of the day, and find 50 people in violation of code of code conduct right now. I'm out there putting the air right now. Anytime, anytime day or night. There is no control in there. I've talked to Captain Golden about it. I've talked to uh, Deputy Chief Addison about it. Or any, any clue as to what to do about it. And don't have any answers. I want someone with answers to, to tell me why we can't get Deputy Chief Addison tells me that we don't have enough police post control the train stations. In that case, I think we ought to get more police personnel or shut them down. You know, shut down the West End. Or get enough police personnel to adequately control it and not have half weekend that we that ride the trains and have to go through to get to our destination. I want answers and I want them now. I don't want to keep coming back again and again and again to a board that doesn't represent me because my representative is not here. And they're can't get the job done. I want answers. I want them now. He doesn't have the answers for me. I don't want to talk with him. He doesn't have any answers for me. He has no clue what's going on and how to solve the problem. Do you have someone that can solve the problem? 
Obviously not. <laughs> Next speaker is. Uh... Who would his supervisor be? May I ask that? Who would his supervisor be so I can talk to that person? James Spiller. James Spiller. Is he here tonight? I can say that how to get in touch because I don't get that. <laughs> Next speaker is the boss. The boss Christian. <laughs> Interesting night. <laughs> we, we got the public coming in here saying how bad we look, but yet we're talking about five star treatment. We putting up faulty equipment. We're not putting people in position to better serve the public, and yet we're talking about five star treatment. I ask you, what direction are we trying to go? So when, last time I checked, when we got people to come in and complain about the poor job that we're doing, that doesn't make us look good. <coughs> and yet, we'll start to talking about five-star treatment. We also got issues with transit police, where they don't sometimes know that they work with the operators consistent of dark. We got three operators, two that's been fired, one has been brought, brought back to work, consistent of what transit police is saying. But yet, the public is saying transit police is not out there to protect them. Why, why are we having issues with the employers and they're not take, taking care of the public? I also got a problem with Viola slash MV slash POE. There's been a negativity since, since the existence of MV and POE has been in existence. They're trying to work out the employer's back end. To this day, it hasn't worked. You got the public coming in there saying we don't want the taxi cabs, and yet we're putting them down their throat. They're telling you that they're unsafe, they're unreliable, they're smoking, that their uh, officers that are driving that doesn't even have licenses to drive. But yet, we're not taking into care of the need of the people that invoke our services. Purely. The employers work hard. They come in day in and day out, and they do what you choose not to do. They're in on the buses at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and getting off at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. They're here to provide a service, but yet they have issues day in and day out consistent of what we met, consistent of you. It's a shame that we, we got to go through what we got to go through. We shouldn't have to sit here and listen to what we got to listen to. And all we ask you to do is just stop, sit down, and talk to us. That's all we ask. If, if you sit down with ATU, our union, our presiding president, Mr. Kennedy, our Zillian Board, and our union representatives, we would get a whole lot more done than what you seem to be getting done now. So, so I ask you, was it worth, worth the risk with POE when they undercut the, the money and then you come back and then you want to cut their throats because you because they were chose to underbid the money that they received? Now they're underpaid and, and, and they don't come to you asking them why. All they ask you to do is take care of them like they take care of you. Be there for them like they be there for you. And what's with the public? For them to come in and talk about the ne negativity consistent of what we do, how do we come back and say, fire, star, treatment? It starts with the employees first. All we're asking is, hey, you take care of us like we take care of you. We make you look good. When you don't look good, and the public has spoke that, appreciate you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mary Rhodes, ID number 107267. 
I've been riding dirt since 2004, and I'm rocking all the things that are falling apart. And I listen to that gentleman. I watch the big, higher people put things in position in a way where a lot of the drivers blame, I mean, a lot of the riders blame the drivers for things that aren't even their fault. We keep asking you for help, and the help's not there. Mr. Danish, last time I was here two months ago, I slipped you a little note and asked you, could you please get back to me, and you never did. I put information on there, specifics, my address, my, I don't know if my ID number, I put my phone number on there. We have a mutual friend, but I still haven't heard anything from you. I challenged all of you to get out of your suits and get on those buses and see just what we have to go through. I'm always talking about safety issues. Those buses were made originally for shuttle buses, and yet as an afterthought, they threw in the, the, the back seats and the thing on there. There's no back door on those buses. There's nothing for us to hold on to. There's no way for us to be safe on those buses on a consistent basis and why they stay in service or nobody is upgrading or fixing it goes beyond me. I wanted to give Dart a little bit of, of kudos because I do see some things changing but it's still not changing big enough for us to be able to be safe and for me not to have to hear a, a, a person at dialysis say she went to a doctor's appointment and the cab driver was riding all across the curbs. It's not safe for us to ride them. It's not safe for us to be in them. And when you do this exclusion, they need to take all the people that are able to be upright and walking and put them in the cabs and stop putting the handicapped, disabled, and the elderly that can't control themselves in with these unsafe drivers. They drive too fast. They don't have personal hygiene issues. They don't have air conditioning. They don't even have curbside service. They don't help you. One cab driver shoved the lady into a bus, I mean into the cab. They're putting their hands on people, and if she was smart, see, she's not from where I'm from. She should have sued Dart a long time ago because these signs all over the place saying that it's against the law to assault a dark, a dark driver. Why isn't it against the law to assault a passenger? And you don't need to send me to nobody else, Mr. Danish. You're the one I want. <laughs> oh, he ain't done a big side bus. I don't give a fuck. I said, you. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> okay, Sherry Moss. I'm not here to criticize. All I want to talk about us drivers, you know, uh, it's just a problem that we need to fix because we don't have enough drivers to pick up all these people. And sometimes these people get left or sometimes we can't find them and all of this. And you know, I'm concerned because I care about those folks. I've been working here for seven years. I want to continue to work there. But it's hard on us. We don't get no rest. We trying to do splits. We trying to be there on time. We trying to do everything. I know when money gets shaky, some people can't do this and do that. Like bills. You know what I'm saying? But still. We don't want to be treated like dogs. Because we're concerned. we concerned about those folks. We help them. We rock and roll all day long. It ain't nothing funny out there trying to dodge people from hitting us and all this stuff. It's a lot of work out there. It's not easy. I don't know where they get that from. It's not easy. 
And then you're scared if you, if you do get some, you get in and you fire. But it's hard fighting these people, cutting you off, getting in front of you. Then when you get to your spot, you're trying to help these people. They mean a lot to me. They really do. I don't mind helping. I don't mind working. But just don't use me. Hello, I am Jeremy. Mr. Dennis, I'd like to wave my right to speak this evening. I will turn on October 8th. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Look forward to seeing you next two weeks. Okay, we now have um, Rhonda G. Stewart. Rhonda G. Stewart. Yeah, last but not least. <laughs> you can talk about the express bus to the ski rollers up here on that. Oh yeah, we'll talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you can tell your friends and neighbors about it. It's probably oh, 282. I got a first, I got a first full of them 282 um, um, bus things. <laughs> I won't keep you long, and I hadn't intended on talking tonight myself. I'd invited several other people from the bus tonight, but uh, I didn't go to, um, I didn't see him this morning. But anyhow, um, when I did come to the meeting last time, I spoke with uh, Rob Smith. I was pretty excited about it. The information he'd given me advised me to um, get petitions started and so forth, and uh, several other young ladies on the bus. Uh, did that. Started up the petitions. We're getting folks to sign the ones that ride with us on that bus. Um, I did down, downtown Mesquite and speak with the mayor of Mesquite and talk with Mr. Dittman and he seemed pretty excited about um, possibly getting something done. He um, Every time we get a little electric bill, we'll get these little flyers in the electric bill thing. And I showed him that there was no advertisement about this bus and that thing. Okay, and so the next bill come and we, we got this little thing in there. And there's a little patch in the back corner all the way up at the top that you can barely see. Anybody can see that from here? You can't even see that. Okay, saying compass, continue service to the community. Mesquite compass. That don't have a doggone thing to do with dark. Nobody in their right mind will know that that's a dark bus that will pick you up down there. You know what I'm saying? I, you probably can't do much about that, but that's not going to do much about what we need down there in Mesquite. And all I'm asking for is just like the 283 Express, 283 Express bus that I love so much coming from um, Lake Ray Hubbard Transit, that 283 Express bus pick you up and zip you right downtown and you get your bus to, to the VA or wherever you're going. Just like that. You know, this 282 pick you up and take you to Longview Station. You get off at the Longview, got to get a train from Longview to downtown Dallas and get to downtown Dallas, got to wait a little while and get a, another train to where you're going. But they call it an express. That's not express. That don't that don't go that fast. That 282. That ain't that's not express. And so I told him those things. Looked like he hadn't told nobody that, you know, really he is listening. Somebody needs to do something about that. We really want that 282 express from Mesquite to get us where we're going. And so if y'all need me to help draw up some signs or something down here. Let me know. We need something yellow and blue downtown Mesquite, not not Compass, you know. Well, one thing I want to do is ask uh, Nancy Johnson to give you a true girl ambassador pin tonight. Okay. Uh, an ambassador pin for God. I appreciate your continuing to share this message. And the other thing I'd share with you is uh, probably part of your expression, the squeaky wheel gets, gets the grease. Mm. And if there's any time, if you can fit in your busy schedule, it goes by down to the Lation Department and come to the Deputy Motor Pressure Car. Write that down for me. I didn't catch all that. Write all that down. Oh, Dallas County Lation Department and become a Deputy Motor Pressure Car. Every time you meet people, you can keep their car. But if you don't have that, what you want is your 
number in the street and not in Portland City. What city I need to get to to get that bus? Well, like one was where I left Garland. They had it. Oh, I know them, but where I left in Garland, I used to live in Garland. And got a house in Mesquite last year thinking I'm going to have a bus when I get there. And got that little bus for a little while, and now they're talking about taking my bus. Let me just say one of the things, I'm not even supposed to be talking, but the people who voted in the dark system in 1983 by 21 votes. Oh, I know they're scared. They think somebody going to rob them or something when you get there. But, uh, you know, ain't nobody going to uh, steal a TV and catch the bus to run. You know? <laughs> ain't nobody going to do that. That only make no sense. Ain't nobody going to come to Mesquite and steal no TV and bust in somebody's house and then stand on the corner waiting for a bus to come pick them up. That don't even make no sense. I'll be glad to write up whoever I need to talk to about that. That don't make sense. I'm looking for an express bus that'll pick me up. And that 282 just pick you up in the morning, take you where you're going, and then nothing in the middle of the day. If I get to VA hospital and, and um, you know, mama, you know, need to go to the dentist in the middle of the day, I have no way to get home. Nowhere. Or if I get sick and want to come up out of work, I'm stuck at work all day long, pretty much. Because there's not, it, there's no, no routes in the middle of the day. Nothing at all. That don't make no sense. Thank you for coming in. Okay, who I need to talk to? Who else? Right there. Okay. Is he going to give you one of those pins? Okay. He can carry the message. All right. Okay. <coughs> and I'm going to get all that wrong. We have no more, more testimony to come before us. Thank you both for being here. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay. okay. This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer. Can you actually believe your eyes? If you think you're going to lose a ball game, so you act like a schoolyard bully and take home the game ball so no one can play. Which schoolyard bullies did these guys learn their sportsmanship from? If you like this video or hate it, tell us in the comments or section below. If you want to see more of us, please like us or follow us and tell us in the comments below. We even like it when you call.